Welcome back. I'm Dan. This is I allegedly. And uh, they're going to force you guys to drive an EV car. Isn't that great? It's awesome. Before I get into it, like this video, share this video, and uh, don't forget to join the email list because big announcement coming out over the weekend. And uh, let's get right into it. The Supreme Court, it looks like, is going to have to deal with this. But the Biden administration has issued a mandate for all auto manufacturers that they're going to go, you know, have to have everything produced that's brand new for 2033. Think about it. Joe Biden won't even be president then. But in 2033, in less than 10 years, we're going to have to have every new car that's sold be an electric vehicle, which is insanity. Now, today, think about this. The average electric vehicle is $53,500. A lot of people out there have never driven a $53,000 car, let alone an electric car. And I am telling you, as I travel and as I, you know, drive around this country and the stuff that I'm going to do in April, the one thing I absolutely get a kick out of is going to charging stations where people are waiting in line to charge a vehicle to then wait and go about their trip. When you see the billions of dollars that Ford has invested, when you see the money that GM has invested, and all the bankrupt EV companies out there right now, it's going to be a mandate. You're going to be forced to drive, buy, you know, buy these cars and drive these cars. Who believes that, guys? I don't believe it. And it's going to go all the way to the Supreme Court on all these mandates. Now, the thing that floors me about this is that you know, I'm not Mr. Oil and I don't drink it. Ugh, crude oil, you know, I love it. I don't understand how the automakers right now and how the oil companies are just going to let this pass. It just does not make an ounce of sense to me that they're just letting their entire livelihood and industry be destroyed. The other thing is that, well, listen, Toyota is going to go to hybrid cars. Everybody thinks they're going to go to the plug-in cars that are hybrid. Ask anybody that has a, a plug-in Toyota hybrid and it's a difficult car to have sometimes because if you go to work, you know, I was at a law firm this last week and they had extension cords running out the front door. And I'm like, what are you guys getting? A shampoo's carpet? No, no, that's to charge the partner's plug-in EV car. Okay. What kind of car does he have? Oh, he's got a Toyota plug-in hybrid. What a waste of time. Okay. So anyways, I don't think that this is going to fly. The repair bills are through the roof. We have seen nothing but problems with insurance companies not honoring claims right now. You think that if you, you know, get into a little fender bender and you've got 40 grand worth of damage on your $53,000 car, that they're just going to gleefully write a check for that? No, they're going to turn it down. And I had so many people write me about the difference between you, Dan, having comprehensive and a full coverage over somebody else. No, I have a friend and the people I know have good insurance from different companies, but the insurance companies are playing games right now. So it doesn't matter who you are, guys. They're playing the games right now, and they don't want to pay on these cars. But when you see people that go out and buy $100,000 Rivian trucks, $125,000 Rivian trucks, or you see Alejandro, who, great guy, but that guy, because he got the souped-up cyber truck, and, you know, everybody I asked in the cyber truck, I know a guy that spent over 125000 on his Cybertruck. Oh, mine was only 88000 for mine. So everybody's talking about how, you know, they got a good deal on this, but it's eighty eight grand, guys, which is not for everybody. So let me know what you think about this and share your thoughts on this stuff. I'm up at the, the Citrus Hill Park in North Tustin today. It was, it's nice. Very peaceful. Everybody walks up here. Scammy Sammy Bankman Freed spoke yesterday before his sentencing and he was like, hey, I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, not that sorry because really everybody's getting back their money and uh, didn't mean to mislead anybody and it infuriated the judge and he got 25 years. Now, here's the thing. I've had people say he's going to get pardoned. He's going to get this. He's going to get that. This is a federal sentence which if you look at any federal crime, he's supposed to do 85% of that. So we'll see. So for you guys that are saying he's going to be out in 24 months and all this nonsense, 
I don't believe that for a second. Now, the other thing is I want you to think about this. In 2022, when he did this and this was shut down, yes, people, it looks like they're going to get their money back from that point. Crypto went up four times during that time, four times during that time. So, yeah, they're going to get back the old money, but they're not going to get the appreciation. And gold just hit an all-time high, too. So what are you going to do about that? Okay. So I have told the story before. And for those of you that are new, I have a business associate that I'm very close to who is a brilliant guy. And I really rely on a lot for a lot of advice. And he's into crypto heavily, going to a crypto conference in Dubai next month okay that's how much he's into this he sat down with his team because he's got a mountain of it and he went through the three exchanges and listen who should we put our money into who should we take it out of what's safe so he had this team investigate everything and they came up with the fact that they didn't feel comfortable with ftx he pulled out all his bitcoin 30 days before the ftx collapsed 30 days 28 days to be exact, but crazy guys, crazy that he got it out. Now think about it. They didn't even buy the Bitcoin back then, guys. This was just such a, such a uh, Bernie Madoff pump and dump. And forever, this guy is going to go down in history as a swindler of all swindlers. Okay. He's not going to get off on this. He's not going to be able to be hired. And yeah, he's only 32 years old and he's going to get out of jail. No, 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 no. Never going to do well, guys. Never He's going to have this with him for the rest of his life. So let me know what you think about this. Share your thoughts on this stuff. Did he get enough time? Okay. There are people that are doing a lot more time for doing a lot less crime, if you know what I mean. And the other thing, there's a man in Nebraska that people keep sending me this story. And uh, the guy lied on his EIDL uh, loan application and his PPP loan application and got $190,000. He wanted over, you know, a million and a half dollars, but he got 190,000. Well, he just got sentenced to five years probation, mandatory reporting, which is not good. And also he has to pay restitution of over $200,000 back. So he got the money, spent the money, has to give it all back, and he's gonna be convicted of a crime. You're going to see more and more people that you may know that just do it, just tell them whatever. They're not gonna check. They are going to check, and they're going to check today if you lied or not. So for those of you that got EIDL loans and PPP loans, and I just went out of business, and I've had people write me and tell me, Dan, what are they going to do? They're, they're not going to do anything. They're just going to forgive this money. You're kidding yourself. One thing about those loans is you agreed to have mandatory audits from the Justice Department. So there's people that are going to be out there going to be real disappointed when uh, the feds start knocking on their door with those different three letter agencies that want to have a conversation. So let me know what you think about that so far. You know, we got the jobs claim from yesterday and miraculously, you know, the same amount of people are unemployed. You know, you hear all these layoffs, you've got, you know, 24 large companies, hundreds of thousands of people lost their job and small companies. you know think of the small restaurants think of the people here in california there's been mass layoffs in the last two weeks here in california at fast food restaurants where they are going to go and you're going to wait an hour for your burgers i'm telling you that it's going to be crazy because nobody wants to pay 20 dollars an hour to hire these people and if you have a restaurant or you have another type of of service company nail salon hair salon, uh, anything like that, they're going to want the 20 bucks too. So you're just going to see an absolute revolt when it comes to this. So there's that. The next thing is the um, uh, Facebook. It looks like Facebook was spying on its competitors. Isn't that nice? Marky Mark, up to no good. Okay. There's a story below on that that you guys got to read. So I have a feeling these guys do this stuff all the time, you know. But uh, we just call it competition. Yeah, okay. Um, something great out of Florida. They have an anti-squatter law in Florida, which I absolutely love. And this anti-squatter law is really good because, you know, we've seen in the news lately people like Flash Shelton here in 
Southern California that's going and knocking on doors and saying, hello, uh, you don't live here and uh, you need to leave. And the most brilliant one was the fact that they're saying, hey, we're doing a 24 hour inspection and they're showing up at these people's houses and then just locking the doors and changing the locks and boarding up the windows. Oh, and you guys better get your stuff out because we're going to do some work on this place now because it's uninhabitable. We're going to make sure it is. Wow. Now, Florida just passed a law, the anti-squatting law. So, you know, what this is, is that let's say you even have a family member that, hey, I want this guy out. He's my cousin. He's an idiot. He's lazy. He's not paying us rent. He's got to get out of the house. It's as simple as that to people that overtook your property. And what it is, is that if you call the sheriff, they will show up and they will say without a court order, without a court hearing, without having to wait, here's what the law states. Okay, John, let's use Dan. Okay, Dan, listen, show us your lease that you have. Oh, here's the lease. And people are producing these ridiculous leases. Okay, now, great, thanks for the lease. Show us how you're paying the rent and proof that you've paid the rent. Oh, I've paid cash. Well, do you have a bank account where you withdrew the cash? How did you get the cash? Where'd the cash come from? Did you get a receipt from this guy, Dan? Uh, no. Okay. Have a nice day. You need to leave the premises immediately right now. So they're doing that. Isn't that crazy? So this is going to eliminate these problems quickly, very, very fast. And the sheriff loves it because they're just kicking these people out and getting rid of them. Look at this. this overlooks the golf course. Back side of the golf course over here. Really pretty up here, you know? But I'm telling you, all these people just taking over properties, not paying rent. It's a real problem, guys. So you're seeing this over and over again, and Florida did something about it. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in other states if they take notice to this. Now, you know, certain states like... Uh, good old New York is letting people, you know, they're arresting the homeowners when they show up. They're, they're telling them these people have rights, making them file 15 day court appearances. And then sometimes the people don't even show up for that and they ask for an extension and they're granted the extension. So this is terrible guys. You're going to see more problems like this, but it's nice that Florida took the first step in fixing this. Okay. So let me know what you think about that. Every day there is a new scam and you have to be leery of this because the criminals are getting more brazen and they're getting more and more sophisticated with what they do. Some of these are as simple as sending you a text message that you shouldn't answer, shouldn't look at, you should report, you know, screenshot it, report it and, uh, you know, block the number. We we'll also have email scams where people email you and demanding Bitcoin and demanding things to loosen your website up. Get ready, guys. You're going to have this happen more and more and more as we move forward. So the latest one here in Orange County, too, which is wild, was there is a Romanian gang that is putting skimmers on the uh, check stands at Walmart during self-checkout. And what happens is, you know, we've all seen this, the mother with the three kids out in front of the store that's trying to collect money and feed her kids. Well, she's got a Bluetooth device collecting all of the data that you swipe. And then they, they get this money and they send it back home and they buy luxury cars and do nefarious things with it. But this is more and more difficult, guys, to, to fight. But if you see anything at checkout that doesn't look right, do not swipe your card. Do not you know, enter your PIN number, do not do anything and call over, you know, store security immediately and make sure that uh, you're not going to give them your card because once they get it, guys, you're done, okay? And the worst thing is that they're doing the EBT, the people that are on welfare, you know, single moms that are just trying to pay their bills right now and feed their kids, uh, they're going after them because it's cash, it's cash, cash, cash. And they can take those cards they can transfer it to another, the amount, transfer it to another card. And then before you know it, you know, they're, they've cleaned these people out and the people can't eat, you know. So, hey, I was the victim of a crime. Okay, well, next month you'll have more money. Okay. So what about my kids? Well, next month you'll have more money. 
you know? So it's awful. We're seeing this more and more and more, and it's become a bigger problem all the time, guys. So, you know, it, it just, it's getting bad. It really is. You know, we're seeing all these different restaurants. Everything's good, though, right? Remember that? Don't worry, everything's good. Now, they're talking about Red Lobster going out of business, and I was fascinated by Red Lobster because I have know somebody that owns a restaurant that set me down and explained how they make all this different food and how you have it, you know, uh, frozen and it's portioned already and all this stuff is done and just basically heated up and brought to the table. So not the freshest seafood, if you know what I mean, but they keep complaining, the management does, that Red Lobster is going to go out of business because they had a $20 all-you-can-eat shrimp deal. That's now crab for $29, but you got to join the club and hop on one foot to get it. It's ridiculous, guys. It's absolutely ridiculous. How about the fact that people are broke right now? You know, great story below about the dollar menu at McDonald's. It's no longer a dollar. Okay, we talked about this, how Dollar Tree is no longer Dollar Tree, and it hasn't been that for two years now, when it was Dollar 25 Tree. Now it's $7 Tree. So let me know what you think about this, guys, because so many people, you know, used to walk in those stores and just be able to throw a ton of stuff in your basket now you got to sit there and look at everything and the thing that cr is crazy about the 99 cent store this is 2.99 this is 3.99 this is 1.99 are you fine with that are you okay with that they have to ask for everything and if you've noticed it takes forever to check out of those places now because people get furious because they go what do you mean it's 36 dollars i've got I've got nine items here okay so people are upset about that but share your thoughts and all this stuff be leery of everything. The scams, guys, when this economy gets worse, which is where it's headed, I know that people go, everything is fine. The fact that, you know, you have some businesses that are doing well. You have some restaurants that are doing well. Ask the restaurant owner if people are spending the same amount of money that they did uh, a year ago. Ask them that because they'll all tell you the same thing, that they're cutting back, sharing meals, sharing appetizers, not ordering appetizers things like that. You're seeing more and more people cut back. And, uh, you know, gambling in Vegas, through the roof right now. Everybody's you know, having record years out there. People are trying to hit the jackpot out there. But as far as the restaurants and the high-end stuff, it's not the same, guys. It's not the same. So what other restaurants going to go out of business? Let me know. Where do you, who do you think is going next? Seriously. You know, there's a great article below that people talk about dating and how you're never supposed to take anybody to Cheesecake Factory on a first date, which I think is funny. But uh, um, Cheesecake Factory, you know, they have over, the menu is over 20 pages long. They have over 200 items. And this, they interviewed this one woman that worked there, and she was talking about how difficult it was to work there because it took uh, three weeks to learn the menu, okay, before they would let her cook. And how you don't realize that there's over 200 items on the menu which I've always been blown away by. But the thing about Cheesecake Factory is, when have you ever been there that they didn't make you wait just to prove the point that this is the Cheesecake Factory and, and you have to wait when you come here. Pass, okay? Pasadena, guys, okay? So let me know what you think about this. But again, what restaurant's going to go out of business? What major chain is going to go out of business? You know, we've done this with the department stores and I've had so many people write me about Easter. Do you know who's closed? It's going to close this week for a day. It's like, yeah, they're closing for Easter. So it's, it's a non-issue, guys. I'm going to end this video with these last couple stories. And as we get closer to the end of the month, again, food always comes up. And uh, Dr. Marvin, my brother, Dave, and six other people sent me this story. And that is that Taco Bell is now going to charge you for the taco sauce packets. 20 cents a piece, guys. Oh, you want sauce on that? 20 cents a piece. Again, it's crazy, guys, because they're only doing this because of the abuse and because they're not making enough money. That yes, it's yes, it's irritating, and yes, it's going to make you rethink. Yeah, give me 14 of them. You know, it's going to stop that. But you know, it, it's just the sign of the times, guys. It really is. I can't stand Taco Bell lately because they have kiosks that uh um you know that you have to walk up and order things the combo burrito which is meat and bean is not on there 
So you have to order a bean burrito and then add meat to it, which is insane, guys. It's not things that are not on the menu, you know. So Taco Bell's got its own problems. Final thing, this is a woman shared this story, was Applebee's has a new Bacardi bucket, and it's ten dollars, and you get a little little bucket of Bacardi, and you can have a nice Bacardi breeze as you uh, eat at Applebee's. And people get these buckets that have Bacardi on the side. And what do they do? They walk out with them and, but you know, Applebee's is seizing them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Those aren't yours to keep. Even though it looks like a decorative commemorative thing, that's ours. So the embarrassment of being told that you stole something basically, and we want it back. That's what they're doing to people. Now, here's the thing. I did this two years ago where we had wild stories of things that were stolen from restaurants. And I want to end this video on that. And that is, for those of you that have worked in restaurants, you know, forks, you know, different utensils, different bowls. Oh my God, that server for the cream is amazing. That would look great in my house. Stuff gets ripped off all the time, all the time. So this led to stories and the best one, my favorite one was a Chinese restaurant in San Francisco where they have a lamp on the table and somebody stole the lamp off the table because, oh man, it's just so beautiful. And it was, it was cost hundreds of dollars. And the people wrapped it in a jacket and got it out of the store and stole it. But if, for those of you food workers, share with us what you've seen people steal from stores and restaurants. Because I, I just get a kick out of that. Because, you know, you're seeing desperation now. You're seeing craziness where people try to buy a canoe and they have the sticker for a tomato and they get caught at Walmart. I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about the people that steal when they eat at the restaurants. Let us know this. Don't forget to sign up for the email list. The, the list is below. You click on it. It's very simple. If you want to use this link, you take a picture of it and you're added to our email list. It's very, very simple. But we have a huge announcement coming out, a bunch of cool stuff that's happening. And uh, again, guys, onward and upward. You want to get a hold of me? Hello at iallegedly.com. You know, end of the month, guys. A lot of big changes for uh, April. So I will see you guys very soon.